Africa is actually very rich. It's very wealthy. When they talk about uh, human capital or natural resources, uh, uh, I, I don't think you have uh, a richer con uh, continent. Uh, resolve that. How do we turn uh, the potential, the wealth, the, you know, in terms of people and the resources into this reality that uh, Africa should be, uh, where uh, it, it is actually, it actually has resources to deploy, uh, and that's the problem we, we, we have to, to address. So there is a lot we can do on our continent. But we have to work, therefore, toward creating that stability in our continent, the governance that allows our people. So there is the, the, the political side uh, that has to create that environment, uh, create those incentives, if you will, that uh, things that are attractive for, for the Africans and, and for the Africans to, pe to feel that they are in the right place. We'd like to engage you in a discussion concerning your life and work, leadership and governance, as well as your vision for the Republic of Rwanda and Africa. Let me start... Uh uh, with the introduction you made uh, when you're <laughs> talking about uh, leaders you normally have uh, in the academia and the industry that you are used to. Um, I find myself right in between. <laughs> and I've also discovered that my job is to try and uh, make these two hold together. Uh, as a responsibility. You see, um, over time, when you look back uh, in our continent, so many things uh, have happened. Others we have uh, possibilities for. We can easily make things happen. We understand uh, the problems of Africa. We have even discussed them extensively in each country or with all of us together, the continent, uh, the countries of our continent. Um, the problem lies in being able to do what we know very well, that is going to work for us. Even when we have talked about it uh, so many times and agreed, and everyone is you know, seemingly on board, when it comes to doing things, there is always going to be a gap. And for people being educated, you know, we have uh, many young people across the continent, with each country you go to, they tell you young people, uh, you know, meaning the age of 30 and below, they will be 60% of their population, or even above, like in our case. Um, and many of Africans have uh, actually been able to study uh, and acquired uh, and developed their talent and uh, acquired uh, very uh, impressive uh, qualifications. Uh, in fact, uh, many of which uh, are applied in other parts of the world to address the solutions there. Uh, and I'm not complaining about that. If the Africans were educated, developed their talents, and engineers, doctors, different kinds, who for different reasons find themselves uh, uh, working in other places other than our continent, that, that's not a problem at all. It's, it's maybe also a good thing that uh, 
they are well utilized. So the, the gap, therefore, now that remains is how do we also tap into this pool of talent that is so well uh, developed and vast and um, so there is a lot we can do on our continent by not only establishing institutions, like, but we have to work therefore toward creating that stability in our continent. The governance that allows our people, those who have uh, already developed their talent and have skills and knowledge to address uh, the many problems and challenges Africa faces, uh, in addition to those who are already in our continent anyway, trying their best uh, like uh, we see in, in many other parts. Uh, so there is the, the, the political side uh, that has to create that environment, uh, create those incentives, if you will, uh, that things that are attractive for, for the Africans and, and for the Africans to, pe to feel that they are in the right place in their own continent. I think the first thing is in our minds, uh, the moment we are open to saying we are not confined to just our countries um, in terms of looking for opportunity, but also even uh, doing whatever you want to do, uh, whether it is business or in the area of uh, innovations, because you will find even the challenges are similar across the continent. The challenges Rwandans face are the challenges you find in the Gambia or Ghana. Or, uh, so the young people should just be open-minded. Mm -hmm. They should uh, want to go beyond their own countries uh, and feel connected to either neighbors or the whole continent, if you will, and that should uh, be the case, whatever you are doing, whether it is uh, studying, it is doing business, it's uh, uh, looking for an opportunity that will develop you, but in the end, whether directly or indirectly, will also be contributing to the development of the continent. Actually, Africa is not limited in terms of resources. Uh, and it, it, though it is a problem in a sense, that is the, the way it is perceived. Um, therefore, we've got to change that. Uh, in fact, many people say and, and even wonder why there is this um, uh, sort of uh, paradox. Uh, Africa is actually very rich. It's very wealthy. Whether you talk about uh, human capital or natural resources, uh, uh, I, I don't think you have uh, a richer count, uh, continent uh, than Africa. So, therefore, that, that, now that is, becomes our, our question to, to answer. So how do we resolve that? How do we turn uh, the potential, the wealth, the, you know, in terms of people and the resources into this reality that uh, Africa should be, uh, where uh, it is actually it actually has resources to deploy, uh, and that's the problem we, we, we have to, to address. Therefore, Africa, each country, has to address uh, that problem 
by looking at what we have as each country, but also what we if can even have if we came together as countries, uh, allowing Africans to, 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 to work together and, and, and develop these resources as we know them. So we, we, in our case, uh, since you also raised it, um, we found that we have some resources to invest. It also matters uh, how we prioritize our, our, our areas of investment. As I mentioned earlier, we have decided we are going to invest in education. But that means we are investing in our people, and our people, for all countries I know, uh, the people are the number one assets of any country, uh, and, and even more importantly for us, Rwanda, because uh, uh, what other countries may have in plenty, we don't have. That means on the side of the natural resources. But we still could find uh, resources to invest in education. Well, I think startups need uh, some way of also accessing uh, finance to, to be able to do things. Uh, uh, you, you access, you have access to finance, you also for taxes, that can be looked at. Much as uh, taxes are um, the, the most uh, difficult things to address anywhere in the world, uh, and, and there are always a, a cause for discussion and the debates, uh, and it will continue. <laughs> but in our case, we have also been looking at actually the possibility of making it easier for startups uh, and others uh, in the area of innovation, uh, where taxes can come later, not as at, during a certain uh, phase. Uh, but anyway, I know that even if we do that at a later stage, still there will be complaints. <laughs> but at least we have given uh, people a good start uh, and to, you know, sort of stabilize them so that now the, the, they are on the right path and uh, the path that is already earning them something from which the tax can also uh, come. So it's a point that we, I, I take not of serious rate, it's already under discussion. It's, it's almost, I think, in other places they discuss that too, but in a uh, particular case of this country, we, we, we are always talking about and uh, trying to do different things. In fact, there are some areas where taxes have been uh, already waived, uh, especially in the area of technology and some innovations that are around that. There are the tools to be used. Uh, most of them have uh, seen uh, tax waivers. Uh, so it, it, the tax question is a broad one, but we have been particular and, and making sure that we, we deal with those uh, uh, tax points that we, if if we, we we remove taxes, it will launch uh, certain uh, productive activity for for people, and then they can pay their taxes in the future. Thank you so much, Your Excellency.
My name is Stephen Mokora. I'm from Kenya. Master of Science Information Technology student here in Carnegie Mellon University, Africa, and a grateful Smart Africa scholar. <laughs> so, I, I first start by saying thank you, a big thank you to Your Excellency for the support that you have given uh, students to study in CMU Africa, specifically students of East African community, by settling half of the cost of our tuition fee here in CMU Africa. We are How Africa is not lacking in terms of resources, depending on what you are talking about or how far you want to take it. Because, as, as you said, uh, Rwanda uh, pays uh, for the students here 50%. I mean, if Rwanda can do it, any country can do it. <laughs> uh, it, it it's just a question of what uh, you choose to do mm. uh, and, and thinking about what, what uh, um, the outcome is. We don't take it for granted. If it's your first time here, please subscribe, press that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future stories that we bring you here. Think progress. What does progress mean to you? Have a fine day.